Alright, welcome back to another Nintendad tutorial for RPG Maker MV on the Nintendo Switch. Now, for this one, I'm jumping into a world that my son and I kind of co-created and he, he really took it over, so I'll show you a few things that he did. But one of the things that we found early on, when we put in a fireplace and added the fire, it was just static and kind of boring. So, as you can see here, You've got the fireplace going, and the lamps are even flickering. So we're going to show you how to get all of that going. Before I jump into the tutorial there, I just wanted to turn up the volume again on the game so you could kind of hear the sound effect as well, and I'll show you that. But once we get into the creator, so I'm just going to go over here and grab fireplace and just drop that in here I like to put it up against the wall so we're gonna switch to editing mode or event mode and we're just gonna start a new event very simple drop down to image go into object and we'll find our flame let's go for the basic fire pit and then select OK on that. So that's all we did to start. And I don't know, there might be a different way to do this with the actual event commands, but just dropping the picture in there for now is the first step. Now I'm gonna run a quick play test to show you how it looks with the static effect. Again, not the effect you're going for, but if you notice the uh, fireplace on the left versus the one on the right that we're visiting, one moves, the other's just sitting there. Doesn't really give an authentic feel of a live place that you're visiting. So let's go ahead and go back into the editor. And it's really simple. Like I said, there might be a different way to do this, but what we found was when you go into the editor, the event editor, so again, we'll select this one, edit, now the default is walking, and it says, you know, animation for when a character is moving versus stepping, it's animated when the character is not moving. Well, it's not a character, it's just a fireplace, so I turn off walking, I turn on stepping, hit OK to save that. And that's all, the, that's all, that's all there is to it. Um, now to get the sound effect, I overlay that in the entire map. So come in here to the map properties and there's a lot of different options. For the Elder's House, we just picked Blaze 1. There's a few that you can play with. So it's little touches like this, the sound effects and the movement that really bring your world to life. So you just want to go in and experiment with it, have fun, play around, see what you can do. And now you can see we've got both fire pits going, got the lamps flickering, and it gives it a much better feel and look and aesthetic, so it's, it's more pleasing to the player. So we're going to go outside now, and this is the a look at our first town that we ever created. We have an overlay to give a blizzard effect with the sound effects. Our, so this is one that my son created on his own, and he really wanted to make his own shop. So I gave him the controls, I left the room, let him go crazy, and this is what he came up with. Basically instead of buying things directly from the shopkeeper, you go up to the item in the shop and you pay for it right there. You'll see I have 70 gold left over down in the corner there and we'll go up and buy five, one bread for five gold or 25 gold gets us five. So we'll just buy five and you'll see our gold dropped quite a bit there. So let's jump into the editor and I'll show you how he set that up. And my son, he's 13 and I, I think this is an awesome game 
for kids. I mean, it's a great way for them to learn cause and effect and just basic, I know it's not coding, but basic coding concepts to help, you know, if, if that's ever something he's interested in or, or your kid. But, so you got the three options. You can go in and customize those choices. Buy one for five, five for 25. Now that doesn't actually affect your gold or, or inventory in any way. So you have to do these. When you select this, this is gonna happen. And so there's a conditional branch that on the fourth tab alters the gold. Well, this is looking at how much gold you have. So you have to have more than five gold to be able to spend five gold. And then you have the change added in there. It's gonna reduce five gold from your inventory. So you, you can see the change gold operation decrease five. But in addition, it adds one item. So you can go in and customize your own items in this game. You can create bread or apples or anything. You could make shoes and it increases your inventory by one bread if you select that first option. Now if you don't have enough gold it's gonna give you a message hey you don't have enough gold. And so then he created another one where it'll change your your gold outcome by negative 25 and increase your inventory with five bread so and then you can go in and customize the bread on how that's going to affect your party. Does it heal your hit points? Does it heal your mana? Whatever you want to do with it. Now this time we don't have any money since I, I didn't go into the inn and open the treasure chest to get the 100 gold. So now our, our party is poor. We have zero gold down there. So we'll go over, try to buy the bread. You don't have enough. Five, you don't have enough. But it gives your players the feeling that there's there's a little more control around the world and gives them options. But it's really just a fun little trick to add into your game. Again, just to make it make it stand out a little bit. So you're not just going up and talking to the merchant and getting you know, a list from him directly, but you can walk around the shop and buy things. And again, my son came up with that and uh, he was really proud of it. So I thought it turned out pretty good. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something. Again, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more Nintendad goodness.